Well, hi, my name is Tommy Breckeisen, and I decided that uh, I'm going to start to document my residency experience here at GCU. Um, I am in my first residency, and today is day two, so it's Tuesday. Um, I did not start this process yesterday because uh, I just thought about it, but I was thinking, I was like, wow, what would I really have liked to have before coming to residency? And uh, having a video kind of explaining what to expect would have been uh, pretty awesome. So I thought, well, I might as well do that video and see if it'll help any of the other learners that uh, come out to residency because it's uh, you get a little bit of what you expect, a little bit of what you don't, and it's it's kind of fun. So um, I flew in uh, from San Diego, oh, San Diego, San Antonio, and um, and it was a pretty neat experience. Got from the airport, took about uh, about 20 minutes, I guess, to drive here, and uh, everything was really easy to find. Um, very nice welcome. They give you a bottle of water, so that's nice, especially coming off an airplane, and uh, get you all situated. Um, and it was pretty cool. So day one on Monday, around 1 o'clock, we went to registration. Registration uh, kind of came to us. It was in the lobby of the hotel. And we uh, got our little welcome packet, had some nice information, some maps, some um, things to do, some places to eat, some where places uh, have takeout, etc. Library scheduling, uh, they have a one-on-one -on -one with the librarian during this time, which I strongly recommend signing up for early, um, even if you don't know when you'd want to meet with them. Uh, I think meeting after, uh, the, at least on Tuesday, um, any time after Tuesday would probably be an awesome time to meet because what you learn on Tuesday is going to be um, a lot. So uh, you go to the registration, you get a nice little uh, little badge with your name on it and not the USB, that's mine. I can't turn it around. There we go. And that helps you get into all the classrooms where you need to be. Um, here is the hotel room that I am staying in. It's pretty nice. Um, can't complain. It's got two beds. Some of them have two beds. Some of them have one bed. Just depends on what room you get. Uh, either way, you're going to be sleeping in it. Well, hopefully, because there's a lot to a lot to do here. So after that registration, uh, we went to the conference center, which is right next to just a quick little walk just across the parking lot, so it's not too bad, from the hotel. And we found our rooms, and we sat with the same learners that we have in our classrooms, and we got to meet our instructors, who are the same instructors that we had in the classroom as well. I believe everyone gets two instructors, at least that's what we're doing here, I don't know if this is all the time, but we had two instructors and they both introduced themselves and uh, a little bit of their background and that was kind of nice. And then we got to introduce ourselves. And of course with any introduction exercise inside of a classroom they asked that you focus on a couple of things. And those things that they focus, asked us to focus on were, one, our program, so if we were an educational doctorate or a PhD, then what our program was, and what our area of interest was, and what type of um, gap or research or topic that we wanted at the time. There wasn't a whole lot of grilling in that. There was just some general uh, get to know you -ness, but uh, we were asked on a couple of times if we brought up a topic and said that this is where the research leads or this is what we're interested in and we got uh, some of those questions of like well how do you know that's a good topic and how do you know that's what the um, right place to go is who said that that's good research so that was pretty interesting um, that ended with a dinner um, it was provided we went back to the hotel uh, restaurant very nice restaurant and um, had a buffet style dinner it was pretty good um, at that time, a couple of people spoke, the dean spoke, um, giving us a whole history of GCU and uh, the layout. And then they brought for us, our speaker that night was a recent graduate who had just passed their dissertation. And I mean by recent, by like in the last year. So I believe this gentleman um, uh, graduated, like, uh, or at least defended his thesis or his uh, dissertation um, uh, a year ago or so. So it just kind of broke down what to expect, what to uh, what to do. Um, it, 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 for me, it was a lot of what I've already heard from other teachers, from other uh, students. But uh, I think repetition is is very critical because then you got you can start to filter out the stuff that really matters and what's important. And a lot of what he said has been said already. So I think what a lot of what we've been hearing so far has been pretty important. Now at the end of that, we all went home. For us, we had homework the first night. Um, 
that homework for us was to find our gap. And our gap was to be found by finding some literature, going to the end of that literature, and seeing what limitations or gaps were provided based off of the research that we found. So if you find an article that says XYZ, then at the end it says, given the conclusion of XYZ, we still have gaps or limitations, and those limitations are these, then that can be a strong gap for a learner to uh, build their dissertation off of. And so we brought those to the classroom on Tuesday, and that's today. So today, uh, Tuesday, was a long day. Um, we started at uh, 8 o'clock. We had breakfast, cutting up to breakfast at the, um, in the lobby, and we started at 8 o'clock, and about that time we go through some some standard um, lecture-based material that both the instructors had per provided and prepared for us. We learned about, again, about the gap, about, about what uh, methods were, how to get the uh, problem statement, and uh, just going through a lot of the key points of the 10-point template that we have, the 10 strategic, strategic point template that we've been provided already. So that was really helpful, and it's nice to sit there with like-minded students who have the same questions, concerns, compliments, and critiques that we all have and that we're worried about. Um, what I learned was I'm not alone in a lot of my um, understanding of what we're doing, and I'm not alone in on some of my misunderstanding of what we're doing, um, and that's a nice process to go through. The uh, instruction type that we received was not... Um, heavy on PowerPoint, although some of the classes we hear are heavy on PowerPoint. Ours was more of a uh, dialectic approach, um, very Socratic in its, uh, in its approach to how we're asking questions. So uh, I asked a question, for example, and uh, I didn't really receive a straight answer, but I received an answer that helped me to learn the material and come up with a conclusion and answer as a group, which in some cases, I'm like, will you just give me the answer? I just give me the thing I'm looking for. And other times, it's like, wow, I guess I'm never going to lose that answer now that we went through this process to get it. So it's been useful, and uh, every, every teacher's got their own style, and every learner's got their own style. So hopefully it matches uh, well with yours, or at least you can adapt as you go through. Um, during that process, or after that process of going through a couple of the key points, we uh, broke off for individual one-on-ones. Half the class was divided with one instructor, half with the other, and we went up and defended, that's a very key word there, defended our gap. And the way we defended the gap is we showed in the literature what the um, authors had said was limitations or gaps, and we said based off of that, we want to do this thing. Having more than one source, more than one article that can point to the same gap is very useful. Um, synthesizing articles to have the um, to fulfill some of the some of the cracks within the gap. I'd like to say gaps within the gaps, but this word gap is going to be so uh, ingrained in your mind, you're probably not even going to shop at the store. The gap, but finding those things and making sure that they work uh, was important. At that time, they will um, kind of tear it apart a little bit. They're really nice about it, but they're going to say, "Here's this. Here's that. Here's this. Things that can think about." And then students who uh, have found a legitimate gap, uh, will, everyone will clap, and then they will present in front of the class right then and there and say, this is what I found. It takes about two minutes. And then they move on to the next student. The interesting thing I found with that was after I found my gap, I, um, on the first time, I kind of didn't feel very confident that it was a gap. Um, and not so much that the instructor didn't understand what I was saying, but maybe I wasn't clear in what I was saying. And so I took it to my other instructor when she had um, a, a gap in her and who she was talking to, and I presented it to her as well, and she informed me that I might have a gap, but there's some other things that are going to be problematic with it. So even if you have a gap, if your measurements and your instruments are not valid, if your measurements can't be uh, qualitative or quantitatively um, sound, if it's not going to be something that's going to be bulletproof, that's the word I'm using now is I need a bulletproof dissertation, um, when sometimes in articles it seems like they can be like, yeah, I guess I'll study this thing, but dissertations need to be bulletproof, um, that's what I'm learning, uh, those are the kind of questions that you're going to have to kind of answer and uh, figure out. We had lunch, which was a, uh, another buffet style, it was Taco Tuesday, so yay, uh, tacos, and, um, Went back to uh, to work again, talked about expectations in, in school, time management, and then we hit back on uh, talking about and finding that gap. 
Our homework tonight, for those who didn't find the gap, have to find the gap. And for those of us who did find the gap um, in our research, we need to find three supporting articles to justify that gap still. And then we need to start working on our problem statement, possibly uh, coming up with possible uh, research, research questions and then uh, possibly hypotheses that go along with that. And I think we're going to start to nail that down as we go forward. Now, that being said, it's a lot of information that we've learned. My personal feeling about the process is that we're not learning to find the material that we're going to be working on in our dissertation. I think what we're doing is we're going through the steps so that when we do find it, we've had that experience. Meaning that this process isn't about the project, meaning the dissertation, it's about the process. I am in my, I'm currently in my fifth class at GCU, and I'm in my residency as well. And a lot of the learners in the class are in their seventh, eighth class. So they're in a little bit on the, they've been around for a little bit longer than I have. And the general uh, feeling amongst those who are taking their residency now a little bit later is, boy, I wish I had this when I was in my first or second class. And I feel very fortunate that I'm in my fourth class, or in my fifth class, I only had four classes. And now I'm taking uh, residency. Um, where that's kind of a problem is there's a couple of theoretical um, concepts that I'm, I'm struggling with because I haven't had exposure to those in some other classes. So like what makes a valid instrument uh, valid? <laughs> How do I apply those things? That's kind of where I've been stuck today and received a lot of help with. But I think having some of that groundwork is is, is uh is good. But it's a give or take on either side. Either you're going to spend a lot of time working on uh, what you think you're going to work on, then you're going to come here and get your world kind of shattered. Or you're going to come here early, get some help to really find out what you're going to do. But in lieu of uh, having all your, uh, you know, theoretical, all your, you know, your fundamental classes done, you might not have all the information there. But that being said, it's been a pretty enjoyable experience. Everyone's really nice. Um, everyone's been very considerate. Uh, I have uh, really enjoyed it so far. And I'm exhausted because of how much we have to think, how much we have to defend, defend, and defend, and um, defend some more. And that's just kind of uh, mentally draining. Um, and now I have homework to do. So I'm going to have to find those things so that I can defend them tomorrow and I'll be getting in some sleep and uh, hopefully uh, things will go well and I'll continue my story tomorrow. Well, if you watched all this, thank you. hope it's helped you and uh, good luck on your first two days when you go to residency. Bye.